as the first school children are set to walk through the gates, uh, that is on Monday, right? What does your school have in place to help children, staff, stay safe? Yeah, well, a lot of parents are obviously very concerned about it. Alice is at a primary school in Stratford-upon-Avon. Good morning, Alice. All alone in the playground. I know, this is Bridgetown Primary School and normally at this time, just gone half ten, it would be buzzing. This would be morning break and there should be more than a hundred pupils running around, bumping into each other, holding hands, playing games, catch, tag, none of that. Obviously none of that's happened for the last ten weeks. There have been key workers' children here, but only sort of twenty or so a day. But none of that has happened. This has been empty. But Monday, the government has said, Primary schools can open to reception, year one and year six pupils. And Bridgetown Primary School in Stratford-upon-Avon has said, yep, we're up for that. First of June on Monday, we are going to open our doors to those children. But as you say, what's it going to look like for children? What can parents tell their children to expect? Will they be sanitised at the door? Will there be masks? How scary will it be? Well, come in and hopefully I can reassure you. So this is a classroom set up for Monday. Normally Normally there would be 30 children in this classroom. There's only 11 desks set out, all at the correct distance apart. And this is going to be the children's bubble. This sort of 11 or 12 bubble with their class teacher. They will stay together, have lunch together. They will go and play together. They will work together. So it will sort of become those pupils, those children's extended household. So if one pupil's uh, family at home starts having symptoms, then that whole bubble will be affected. And that bubble will probably only come in for one day a week at first as they manage it. Because there's a lot of pupils, there's 400 pupils at this school, and obviously they've got to get through them quickly and to get them all in introduced into school, so one day a week at the moment. They've all got trays. They've all got their own trays, so there's no sharing, there's no, can I borrow a pencil? Can I borrow a rubber? Can't do any of that, I'm afraid. Everything has to be socially distanced. Um, there's signs. Keep two metres apart everywhere. Keep your distance. The loos have been segregated off one at a time. There's more sanitizers. There always were sanitizers. It was always a clean environment, but more sanitizers than ever. This is where the children will be having lunch on Monday. All the tables set out nicely apart. But look, they can still chat to each other. They can still laugh. They can still react with each other. So I'm feeling very reassured so far. And now I'm going to introduce you to Jane Tal Tailby, sorry, who is the head teacher here. Are you excited or are you really nervous? This is a mammoth task for you, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's a mixture of emotions, really. We are um, all, I suppose, a little bit apprehensive about coming back for parents, for staff, for children. There's going to be that level of anxiety there, a bit like there is after a summer holiday, but more so because that time period has been quite long. But there is also excitement. And, you know, on a personal level, we're just all really looking forward to seeing the children again. And that, that well-being for the children is paramount. That's the most important thing to focus well, on. Well-being. Can you keep them safe? How do you keep primary school children who naturally gravitate to each other, how do you keep them safe? Well, it's a difficult one. And I think with all these things, it's a balance really between mitigating the risks and making sure that it's a comfortable environment where the children feel confident, where they feel secure, where they feel welcomed. So we, we've tried to do everything we possibly can to consider all those risks and put the measures in place that you've described. Um, but we're also conscious that we're a school and we need to provide normality. and although it will be a little bit different, we want to try and make it as normal as it can possibly be. And some children, uh, for some children, the school environment will be the happier, safer environment, sadly, won't it? Yes, we're very conscious that the children will have had a variety of different experiences in their time away. And uh, it's really important that we hear about that. The children will want to tell us about that. And I think we have a real role to play here in providing consistency and stability. And some children will have had some really positive experiences and perhaps other children less so. What about staff? because obviously we've heard what the, the teaching unions have had to say and they feel that they're concerned about the, the pupils, but they're also concerned about staff who may be living with vulnerable parents or a family member. What have you done to protect your staff? Yes, I mean, the, the safety and well-being of the staff is paramount for us as well. You know, it's, it's high up there on the agenda. And when we first knew there were plans to come back, we sent out a survey to see who was able to come back. We fully understood that there would be some staff for all sorts of different reasons who might not be able to. And we're fortunate we've got a really flexible 
team who are full of goodwill, really capable. And we are in the lucky position, I suppose, partly because we're a larger school, that we've got the staff in who the children know. So we are able to say to those children, they will be having their own class teacher when they come next week. They'll be having, on, in most cases, their own teaching assistant. They'll be back in their usual classroom. And that's a lovely position to be in. Um, it all sounds very reassuring. How many, uh, what percentage of the, the class have or what percentage of the parents have said they're happy for their children to return? Uh, well, yes, as you say, we did give parents an option. We made it clear there wasn't, um, you know, it, it wasn't going to be um, a big problem if they didn't send them in, but we wanted to encourage them to do so and explain the measures we'd got in place. And we think we've got about uh, two thirds, slightly less in the younger years and slightly more with the year six, which I and, think is understandable. Oh, that's higher than I would have antis anticipated. Well, I'm going to say good luck for Monday. Thank you. I know you're excited about it. Um, one of the teaching unions said that it was reckless for schools to be reopening. But I have to say, nothing about the preparations that Bridgetown Primary School has been making uh, seems reckless to me. It all seems very safe and very controlled. And actually, we're going to be here on Monday morning when the children come back into school, uh, obviously keeping our distance, but just seeing their reaction and hopefully seeing that they are really excited to be back, seeing their teachers, seeing their friends in their known environment and getting back to learning and playing uh, and normality, hopefully. Well, we'll look forward to that, Alice. Thank, thank you very you, much, Dean. And, and thank you to Mrs. Tailby there for um, giving us access and, and being so good with us all there.